hey, I just released a pretty cool command line, DevAI, which allows the AI to code my way rather than me coding the AI way. And best of all, it's just a command line, so it can work with any ID. And it's super simple because now an agent is one markdown file with scripting for the data, templating for the instruction, and then scripting for the data processing. So it's very powerful and it's very simple to use. So let me show you a demo here. So first, I'm going to have a simple repo here, and that is kind of a code base that I have, which is a simple FS. Yeah, so that is one of the crate. has nothing to do with AI. Now, let's say that I want to fix the English of all of these files. And so one of the problems here with Copilot, and I use Copilot, Copilot is not bad, but the problem is that if you want to work on multiple files, it kind of gets tricky. Cursor helps a lot, but even then, you don't have the full control. So here's a way that DevAI works. So first, you do a cargo, install, DevAI. So I already have installed. And then you do a DevAI in it. So you can do run. The run will run in it just before, but right now we're just going to run the in it. So now when I do the in it, we're going to see that it creates that folder, which is .devai, custom folders, that is empty. And then we have our default. And we have one agent, which again, I'm going to click on it later, which is a proof comments. So that's one. And then we have one config file. So let me show you how we're going to use it first. So the way we use it is like that. DevAI, run, and then I give the name, this name, not the path, just the name, and it will go first customs. And if it doesn't find it, it will look there. So I can override whatever I want. And then I can do proof comments. So that is to proofread the comments. And now I'm going to create my items that are going to be, be based on my files. So I'm going to do dash F and I'm going to do a glob here. So I do source and I'm going to take all of the files. Right now, we're just going to do it on two files. And that is going to be uh, the S, the one that starts with the S. So that is a good one. So I'm going to do S star RS. Okay. And now I'm going to press enter. So now it's running the proof comments and that is going to the file here, that is what it finds. And then it's going to be the GPT for Omini. And in fact, that is what we have here. You can put any models or AI providers. It's using GenAI on the background, so that's cool. And right now we have item concurrency of one. We're going to see that later. So that would basically run on every single file and correct the English. So I broke on some English of these two files. I mean, usually I don't need help to break English, but I already run DevAI on this code base. So then I broke it a little bit just to show the example. So now if I go to my GitHub diff here, my Git diff, we can see that it fixed the English and just of the comments. So I added the S over there, put the this over there, and then over here, it fixed the word here that I misspelled. And then if we wait a little bit more, we have the S file over there, change that. And so those two files has been fixed. So again, here, I've already run it on everything, but it's pretty cool. Now, the cool things about that, if, if I wanted to run on everything, I could do something like that. I could do a dev AI, and let's say that I want to run on everything, but I want to be a little bit faster here. So what I will do is I will go to config, and I will do, for example, let's say eight. So I can run eight at a time. Press save, enter, and now I have the eight running at a time. So that we kind of keep a pool of eight running all the time, and then it will finish it at the end. And so now it kind of fix all of the files. And it fix only the files that are needed. That will take some time, and now it's finished. So we can see here that we can blast through the files relatively nice. We can change the model name, obviously. Now, let's see how it works in the proof commands here. If we go to the file now, so that is our agent command. It has those kind of three sections, data, instructions, and then output. Okay, so that is the three things that it has. So if I go to the data here, the goal of this is I get the item, which is a file reference, and then I'm going to load the file. So the item here is each file match that match my globe become an item. I can get the path, but I don't have the content because otherwise I will load all the content, it will be too big. So the file now loads the content with this kind of script. I'm using Rai, which is a scripting language on top of Rust. Eventually, I can have JavaScript and Python. That doesn't really matter. But that will create a file which will have file.path, but file.content. 
And then the Dev AI goes to the next section, which is the instruction. And that is my prompt. I can give any prompt I want. So I say the user will provide you with the content of our Rust programming files. You will correct the English, only modify the command, make sure not to change the code, do not change the code itself, only comments. Sometimes you have to repeat yourself like a kid, but it's a little bit smarter than a kid. And then I put the code like that. Yeah, that's it. And here, all of this one here, it's handlebars. So it's kind of a templating engine format spec in a way that was done in JavaScript, but there's a very good implementation in Rust. So I'm using that. And now we can see that we have the data here, which is whatever is returned from here. So that is a, the way to return the dictionary in Rai. And now I have the data.file.content. And so that is the way it works. And then after, it will send that to the AI, and then it will go to the output. And now I have the item if I want to, I have the data if I want to, and I have also the AI output in the scope. So I'm going to say MD, that is some utility function, extract the blocks of the AI output. So that is a raw text that come back from the AI. And then I'm going to say Rust. That gives me a list of blocks. I'm going to take the first one. I know here by the prompt that should take only one. And then I'm going to do some cleanup here. Sometime the AI or the thing in between does some weird encoding. Sometime, I mean, escaping. Here's a way to decode it if it's needed. And then I just save the file. And then I just return a string here or whatever to be able to be displayed. And so that is what we have over there. Okay? So this is basically what we have for every agent here, every item. And so that allows me to basically customize the things. But the beauty of it now is that we can create our own one. Yeah? So for example, if I, I'm going to do Git C is I have a little uh, shortcut, fix uh, comments. And then I'm going to take the proof comments. And basically, every time we do a run, it's going to check if there's all the default. So if I remove proof comments, it will add it before executing. So that's good. I can customize it in place. Or what I can do is copy paste here just to make it easy. And then I'm going to have another name. So what come in custom takes precedence. And then it goes to the default. And so the custom name, we're going to say uh, code design. So that would be our code design to kind of having the code design of some of the file, one file or multiple files. So the same thing here, we're going to get the items over there, and then we're going to return. So that is a way that you return kind of a dictionary that then we're going to have it back there. Now we don't want to correct the English. So we're going to have a sentence like this one, which is explain the source file below in bullet points make it concise, uh, and key code pattern and general rules. I can add whatever I want. And the cool thing here, we're going to see later how we can do a dash watch. And so it's actually very cool. And now I'm going to have the Rust content here, the, the, the one that we have, that we get from the item. And in this case, we do not care about cleaning up the code, and we do not want to save it on the same files, otherwise we're going to break anything. And so what we want to do here is we want to save the AI output. So sometimes you might want to clean and remove the eventual tick, tick, tick markdown sometime. And there's going to be some utilities here. So like those ones, I'm going to provide some text utilities to do that. And there's already a remove first and last line. But now the path is going to be a data file. So we're going to put the things under, for example, doc slash code design. And we're going to put the file stem. So stem is just the name of the file. And then we're going to add MD. So you guessed it, yeah? When there's going to be redundant files, if we do a nested one, it's going to override it. Later, we can make it more fancier where we can normalize the path with dash or underscore. And so that will make a unique name, or we could take the path and reconstruct the thing. That could be possible as well. But right now we're going to do that. It's going to be simple enough. And now we do that, and then here is, you know, we're just going to do return that, which is going to say, which is going to print it below. So now, dev AI, run, and I'm going to give code design. And because I'm lazy right now, I've done something, I might change it later, but you can do CD. Yeah, so I take the first letter of each section, separated by a dash, and you can abbreviate it like this. But we can say code design is fine. And now I'm going to do F and I'm going to do on two files. So I'm going to do 
source. I'm going to go everywhere, and we're going to do the with JSON dot RS. Okay. Uh, sorry, if I want the tool, is something like that. And now press enter, and then it run the tool. Remember here we have the config at eight here, so plenty enough. And then it's going to run that, and it's going to create the doc file here, code design. And so that is a whole code design. Now here's where it even get better. Let's say that, so in a way, here is a little bit what Anthropix has with artifacts, so not the whole functionality, obviously. But what we can do here, so let's say that I don't want that for now. I just want to work on what I want it to look like. Yeah? So I go back there. I'm going to say I want to change my prompt to kind of format that the way that I want it. Yeah? So now I'm going to do a dev AI run. I'm going to do a CD, yes, I think. And then I'm going to do a dash F. And I'm just going to give the name here with a JSON. So if it's a unique name, it's going to be only this file. Otherwise, it would be all the with JSON files. So that's the way it works by default if you don't have a globe. But now I can do a dash watch. That is a magic here. So for example, if we do this, we're going to save that here on the with JSON. Oops. Yeah, you spotted it. Sorry. RS. OK, so we do that. And that will run these files, this agent, common agent, I call them, on only one file now. And I can see that. And now I can see and I can say, well, it's not really what I wanted. So rather to enter into a chat, because the problem of the chat is that then it's very hard to automate a chat. But if you have only one instruction, I mean one agent, and you keep working on the instruction to get the result you want, then you have done 90% of the automation, because that's it. That's your thing that you can run on any files. So that is the magic of the thing here. Sometimes the chat kind of put us in the wrong track in many ways. So now, for example, let's say that I say, well, you know, it's not really want. I want to make sure you, you put all of the main section in markdown section. So I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to run it. And I don't know if I formatted it correctly here. but then it's going to change it. And now we have the section. And obviously, I can continue to prompt it to have it in different ways here. So for example, here is just putting only the summary of the source file. But I can say, you know, have, make sure you put, uh, you have at least the following markdown section. And AI is pretty good at understanding markdown. So I'm going to do a section which is imports pattern. Uh, function naming error pattern and then other patterns and so that will basically send that and now i can see what it changed it's like oh okay cool you know you have the things over there so now the section here doesn't get right but here i have the import pattern the function naming the error pattern and then the other pattern okay um, and put all of those section in a markdown Header, yes, yeah, Markdown header. So that's why it was confused here. I put that, press save, and then it didn't really follow me here. Uh, put the following section as Markdown heading. Okay. So that is the thing. The nice thing is I'm not entering. So now we get the right thing. So now I get what I want. But the good news is these kind of things didn't get lost into a discussion at all. No discussion. I didn't talk to anybody. I just have, I say, ask once, and then I ask another time, and there's no thread or whatever. So that is a beauty here, because now I can say, okay, I'm happy with that, and I'm going to say, run it. Now I'm not on to watch, and I'm going to do F. And here is code design, but it can be anything. You can even generate stuff. And I'm going to show probably in another video how we can use it in uh, real code, in production code. And actually, Gen AI. So I'm going, Dev AI is using Gen AI, and now I'm using Dev AI to code Gen AI. So it's a whole crazy stuff. And now I do like this, and I'm going to say everybody, yeah, like the guy from Leon. So that will run everything. And because I have 12 here, it's going to create all of these files in parallel. Yeah? That's the good news of NIO not blocking and so on. And then that's it. So I have all these kind of things. And now that's starting to be pretty cool. But now we can even do cooler stuff here. So now that we have done all of this code design of all of my files, now what I can do is I'm going to take I'm going to create a new common agent, I call them, and I'm going to say um, master best practices, okay, MD. 
that is going to be the one that is going to take all of those guys and create the master one. And so what I don't want here, I don't want to run them one by one, because otherwise it's going to repeat. What we want is to send the content of all of these files into one instruction and then have it summarize the whole thing. So here's how we can do it. On the data side, I'm going to paste it here. I've already done it, yeah? But we are going to have all of the code design files, and we're going to list. So that file list, that is what I put in the context, and everything that is doc code design uh, star MD. So that will list all of those files, yeah? Then I'm going to do for all of those files, again, that list, but doesn't load the content. That would be silly, yeah? So now it's up to us in the data here to load the content. And so we're creating another one here, which is all code design files, which has everything else. And now we are returning a dictionary. So this is a way you do a dictionary in Rai, and that will return the dictionary. Now, what we're going to do for our instruction, and remember our instruction, they are handlebar templates. So let me close this file. For the instruction, we're going to have that. And here's the thing, yeah, it's handlebar. So that is a list, is an array. So now I can do a for each. That's the way you do for each in the handlebars. So handlebars is relatively standard. You can, ChatGPT can actually write them pretty well. Eventually, I will even create a default command that will help you create agent. So the whole thing will be, um, you know, bite itself or whatever we want to call it. So here's the instruction. Yeah, below is a list of file content on best practices. Please summarize and consolidate it into one global, concise, and clear best practices files. So far, so good. And then I give the file, I go through each of the files and I put them under markdown. Okay. But I could have put them normally, but this way, again, AI is pretty good at understanding markdown construct. So that I do this. Uh, one of the problems of that, I might want to put six tick at some point because in case there's already some uh, block over there. But right now I'm going to keep it this way. It works pretty well. So this is one that we have. And then on my data output, which is our output, I'm going to have that. I have let content, and then I do a file save, and I'm going to decide here that I say summary code design, okay, content. And then I'm going to do the thing like that. That should probably go to a, a var to avoid mistake later. But now I'm going to do a run. And you guessed it, I don't need to type it, I can do a MBP. And that's it. I don't give any items because if we see here, there's no item business because this one knows what content to get. And then I run this and that will run. Here there's no labels. I could have an item of one or for label one, but this one, this one it runs. And then it create that. And I have one file. So that is the things here. There's um, a utility that I can remove the first line and the last line. So in this case, I will do that. I'm going to do it like this for now. But basically, we have that. And the whole thing can be automated. So that is basically the dev AI, the 0 0.10, which is already pretty cool. And the cool thing as well is to say, let's say that for the code design, you don't want to use GPT-4 mini. So by default, I go GPT-4 mini, but for the code design here, at least this one, the top one, I want different. Now, what I can do is something like that, config, and that will override. Awesome. So 2ML, and then you just do that. And then I'm going to take this guy. And then that's it. And obviously I can ask a generate code, and we're going to see, I'm going to do another demo later using DBI on GenAI to create the endpoint resolver, which is very involved because there's a lot of pointers and um, trait and generics and so on. And it's actually doing a, a very amazing job. So now if I run that, it will actually run GPT-40 on this one. I'm not going to do it. I'm cheap, but that is the way it works. Okay. Hope you liked it. A big thanks to Camilla for their sponsorship. And until next one, happy coding.